Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another video. In this one, I want to talk about how I made this rain effect using a plugin called Particular in After Effects. This animation was one of the opening shots for my film Sensations, which you can watch here on my YouTube channel. So please have a look at that. Uh, but before we dive into After Effects and look at how the rain was made, let's first create the background using Cinema 4D. The setup for this is pretty basic. We have our floor plane and then a few details on top, like the street gutter here on the left, and also some curbs in the background. I put those in there to break up the composition. I think without them, it would have felt too repetitive with only street tiles. The tiles themselves were made using a displacement map on the floor plane. This is created within the texture of the object. I first painted the tiles in Photoshop and added them to the color of the texture. I then cranked up the contrast of the image, making it only black and white, and used that to drive the displacement. What is black here in the image will be displaced downwards and white will be displaced upwards, creating the gaps between the tiles. With some moody low intensity lighting, I got it to look like this. I rendered out the image and took it into Photoshop, where I did a bit of paintwork on top. I drew in some puddles and roughened up some of the hard lines from the 3D render. I also added a heavy blue grade, separating the cooler shadows and the warmer highlights coming from the windows reflected in the puddles. Now when this is done, let's move over to After Effects and have a look at how I made the rain. I brought in my background and added it to a new composition. I am working in 4K here. I created a new solid layer and then using the pen tool, I drew in some rough masks over each puddle. After that, I created another solid layer and put its color to a mid-gray. I made it into a 3D layer by making sure that the small cube icon is activated. This allows me to rotate the layer as a 3D plane. I aligned it with the floor and then under the effects and preset menu, I added the effect CC Drizzle. It's a really handy effect in After Effects, creating ripple effects on surfaces. To cover more of the ground plane, I added a effect called Motion Tile to the layer and I set it to mirror the edges. Moving the order of the layers so that the 3D layer with the drizzle effect is under the mask layer I made earlier, I set it to use the layer above as an alpha mask. Finally, to blend it with the background, I set the blend mode of the ripple layer to overlay. Now that's where the mid-gray background come in handy. You can now see the ripples, but not the gray. Now looking back at the final image, we have two elements to create using particles. So the falling rain itself, but also the raindrops bouncing off the ground. Let's start with the bouncing raindrops. I think without them, the rain would feel just like a filter on top and not part of the scene. I made a new solid and added the particular effect to it. This is a plugin you will have to buy on top of After Effects, so it doesn't come included. However, I think it's one of the effects I've used the most, so I would definitely recommend you getting it. Within the plugin, you have a ton of settings. The first thing I did was to increase the particle count to about 50,000. I then set my emitter type to box, and I expanded the size on both the x-axis and the z-axis. I set the x to around 9,000 and the z to around 16,000. I then moved the entire plane up by dragging the y coordinate into the minuses. I set it so it's just out of frame. Then under the physics tab, I add a lot of gravity to my particles. Playing this back, you can now see the amount of raindrops that fall down. Now we want them to bounce off the floor layers. So what I did is to change the physics mode from air to bounce. This allows us to open this tab here. To use a layer as a floor, they need to be a 3D layer. Luckily, we have already made a 3D layer that lines up with the floor, so let's use that. I set my drizzle effect layer 
to be the floor. You can then change the bounce and slide settings. I set them a bit lower to get less sliding going on. Now the final tab we will look at is the particle tab. This is where we decide the size, color, shape and longevity of the particles. I will set the life to around 2 seconds, reduce the size to let's say 3.5 and increase the size randomness a bit just to add some variation. Finally, I will only show the particles as they bounce. So under the tab size over life, you can draw in using this graph how you want the particle size to change from its first appearance till it's disappearing. I will have it go from 0 to 100 and then down again at the very end. The flickering particles in the background will create quite a nice out of focus effect when they are later blurred. I enabled motion blur to the layer and also in the comp. I also set the blend mode of the particle layer to be classic color dodge. This blends it better with the background and makes it appear more in the zones with highlights, just like raindrops would. I made a new adjustment layer and added the effect lens blur to it. Now I made a new composition where using a black and white gradient, I define the area I want blurred. This is acting as my depth pass. Bringing that into the main comp, I told the lens blur of my adjustment layer to use it as a blur map. By increasing the blur radius, you can see the effect that gives. We now get this sort of shallow depth of field. I then put this main composition into a new comp and set it to the aspect ratio I used for the film. I wanted a bit of a pan up with the camera, so I made the original image higher than the output. Using two position keyframes, I created the pan. Now let's finally add the falling rain on top. I will use this already created rain that we already got and change some of the settings. Let's move a copy of that up to this composition. Let's set its blend mode to normal. I will first change the bounce setting to air and increase the gravity quite a bit. Then let's make the size over life constant throughout. I will also increase the size of the particles a bit and reduce the amount of particles per second to maybe around 3000. These are all just suggestive numbers, of course, you can play around with these, all these settings and make sure that they look good for your scene. In the end, I added an orange layer on top, creating this sort of warm light coming from the back of the image. Here's the final animation one more time. All right, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this and hope it was useful. If you did like it, please like the video. And also, if you wanna see more content, subscribe to the channel. Have a good day and I'll see you soon. Bye.